climate change has affected our uh, our farming activities in, in so many ways. Our farm is a farming estate which is uh, 750 hectares of land. Uh, we are involved in both agronomical as well as uh, veterinary or livestock activities. Climate change has got two extremes. There is the extreme of uh, drought where there is no rain, where you've got a famine. Then there is also another one where you've got flooding. Uh, we've been affected uh, by both. Welcome back to Africa Science Focus, the weekly science and development show from SciDevNet. I'm Ogechie Kianyao. Climate change is resulting in increasingly extreme and unpredictable weather conditions. In sub-Saharan Africa, the disruptive weather conditions are causing hardships. From floods to drought, the continent is witnessing disasters that are exacerbating poverty. The extreme weather conditions make planning difficult for farmers and put their crops and livestock under threat. In this episode, our reporter Michael Kaluki spoke to Zambian farmer Munya Radzi Cedric Muronda. Munya Radzi, who is also the founder and president of the Sub-Saharan Africa Farmers Organization, told us about the effects climate change has had on his farming activities. On the issue of uh, drought, at one time we lost a, a, a lot of livestock because of um, uh, 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 limited water, uh, drinking water for, 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 for animals. And also even the game side, we were affected uh, because we, we didn't have enough water. Further, even on the, cro uh, on the field crops, on the agronomical side, uh, we, 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 had, we had planned a very big crop uh, to put on the farm field and it started very well but midpoint uh, it was rain dependent then so hoping that we have planted well the meteorological office has given us all the right information required uh, the rainfall peak uh, starting season is this the peak period upon this date uh, by this time we have it rescinding so planting dates are these dates and this date I think that time they're giving us, I think, between November 15 and December 15 to be the best planting dates, looking at uh, the rainfall pattern that time. And uh, it so happened that after we planted, uh, it had started very well, but we ended up with a very serious problem because rain went around uh, 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 January, January 20 to about almost uh, end of February. There was no rain for about one and a half months in the middle of the rainy season. We have been affected by flooding, and, uh, and, and uh, it's actually last year. The 2021-2022 farming season, was uh, uh, we, had, we had some cyclonic uh, rainfall pattern, and the cyclone brought it, the rainfall sort of started late, so we were going like in drought, drought, dry spell kind of, a climate but all of a sudden we had rain that came it was too much you know fields were, were wiped away some crops were actually swept away because of the flooding uh we lost we had a brood of 10,000 uh, chickens we found ourselves losing 99,958 beds in terms of economical economical loss we found ourselves losing almost uh 60,000, close to 60,000 uh, US dollars in chickens because of, because of flooding. Munyareti, what uh, impact, additional impact that is, has climate change had on your income and also your household as well? Cl climate change affected our, uh, affected our income uh, as far as activities because we had to find ourselves scaling down uh, production where, where, where we had gone the level where we are growing 10,000 chicken, broiler chickens, we've got about 2,000 free range chicken. Right now we dropped to almost 20%. Uh, We're keeping 2,000, 3,000 chickens now because of the, we've not fully recovered from that. 
and uh, that the, that the effects that we have gone through are that uh, we, 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 we had to sell some of our livestock to to mitigate some of the loans that we had gotten for the for the farming season but because we did not have a good yield we found ourselves in debt uh, some of the debt became so serious we were, we were taken to court because of the effects of climate change we 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 we, 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 we lost when we were holding uh, when we had borrowed or, or we had other people's fund so as a result of that when this happened we found ourselves in a situation where we cannot service debt on time i remember even at one time our 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 our, our children had to 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 to, 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 to delay paying their school fees because funds were not were, 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 were not readily there and I had to so now you see that's becoming personal now this household income getting affected these climate pressures mean farmers are having to adapt and put new measures in place to overcome the weather Munia Razi spoke to us about the changes he's had to implement in his farm after experiencing huge losses of crops the first uh, mitigatory plan that we have effected on the farm was um, we went into geomatic engineering uh, we discovered that our our, our our farm fields were not uh, draining water generally very well because we didn't have drainage lines drainage, drainage lines help the farm field to drain water from the excess water from the from the field so that's the first measure we did. We had to do drainage lines uh, on all the farm fields. Then on livestock, we decided to raise the ground. Uh, certain crop, uh, uh, can I say goats, for example, our goat pen had been a bit down, but now we made sure that it's, it's above the ground, higher than the way it had been. Before, we were like talking of almost... 75 centimeters from the ground but now we have actually gone slightly above a meter just to make sure that if there's any flooding that will happen it will not rise to reach where the goats are sleeping on top so this is what we've done on livestock then as far as the cattle side is concerned we've created one one section where it's a warehouse section where in the event that there is flooding like that we can actually move the animals and keep them into a big warehouse uh, 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 someone was laughing to say, are you trying to be Noah? Are you doing Noah's Ark? <laughs> because it's putting all the animals in an, enclosed, uh, in an enclosure. The idea behind it is to, I think we've seen how stables are done. Stables are, uh, are, 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 are fully closed. This is the same way concept we have come, come up with to make sure that we do not, uh, our animals are not affected by the effects of, uh, of uh, flooding. Munyara, you mentioned that at some point there was a problem you had with not enough rainfall when you planted some crops. Have you put in place any measures to try and deal with that concern? I spoke a lot about flooding. Uh, we, we, we need to speak about the famine. What we did was we had uh, a smaller bowl before, which was... Uh, 50 meters deep, and it was what we're using for household use. For animals, we're relying on the on the local river that just which 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 was reliable, which we thought was reliable. But uh, even irrigation, we thought the river was still reliable. But what we discovered is when there is a drought, all of that does not work. Even that that well, we, we, we we're not getting enough water for us to drink. So as a mitigatory measure, what we have done is we have deal, drilled three commercial boreholes. When I say commercial boreholes, I'm talking of boreholes that are that have got diameters of 24 centimeters. Uh, yeah, uh, of, of about 24 centimeter diameter hole, which which is drilled into the ground almost 250 meters deep. This ensures that there is always water. If if the the levels the, the the water the rivers that are underground 
the first one dries up, we know the second one below will be able to take care of us. If the second one dries up, the third one will do. So we've got maybe 10, 15 rivers on one hole going down. So we are making sure that what we went through will never happen again. Munia Radzi's farm isn't the only one struggling under the weight of climate change. Farmers throughout the African continent are groaning under the weight of the extreme weather conditions. Dr. Mithika Mwenda is the executive director of the Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance. He spoke to us about the interventions that should be adopted to deal with the impact of climate change. We need to adapt. We need to build the resilience of communities at the front line of climate crisis. We need to build their capacity in terms of awareness so that they understand. We need to diversify our uh, agriculture. When we were relying on rain fed agriculture, we need to look for other ways of, uh, of growing our crops, that, like uh, irrigation, and that requires a lot of resources. We need also to, uh, to, uh, to, to improve our technology so that we rely on fat uh, uh, growing crops, which are not relying on seasons. But most importantly, we need communities to get resources. We need sufficient, accessible, and adequate finance. And you know who should provide this. We need actually what we call paradigm shift. Even among our governments, in terms of where they do things, we need to overhaul governance. We need people to take control of their, their lives. We need transparency when these resources, if they come, that they don't enter, go into the pockets of few individuals. We need to protect the people themselves. We need a framework, policy and legal framework, which ensures that when building resilience is not resilience of elites, it's resilience of the people. And those are imperatives of climate justice. So what I can tell you, all those combined, is what we as an organization are calling climate justice. We need just, equitable, ecologically just, fair, inclusive climate response strategies and development pathways which are responsive to our realities and aspirations as Africans. We need involvement of the most marginalized, smallholder farmers, fisher folk, pastoralist groups at the marginal uh, levels, groups uh, uh, at the bottom of the pyramid, women and youth, and disabled people and the aged. So that is what we are fighting for. Dr. Mwenda, what would the future look like on the continent without intervention? It is very bleak. The future is very bleak. And actually, we are facing, it is genocidal. It is catastrophic. It cannot be described by once. What will happen to the regular farmers, say, if there are no interventions? There will be no food. And even, I'm not saying, there will be, right now it is happening. We are not talking about the future. It is currently happening. There is no food. I come from a, a, a place which relies on rain and agriculture. The rains are filmed for the last five consecutive rainfalls seasons. So there is no food. So if there is no food, the food prices are skyrocketing. And of course, there is also even there is no even that food. And you can say we have food deficit. Economically, it affects our economy directly. So we are not going to achieve our vision 2030, for instance, at Kenyan level. People will die, and people are dying. Livestock will die, and we are no food. So that is what is happening now. That's all for our South Africa Science Focus today. If you want to find out more, head to the SideFnet website. That's www.scidev.net. Today's show was produced by Alice Hurst, with reporting by Michael Kaluki, and editing and hosting by Ogechi Ikeanyao. Until next time, goodbye. Africa Science Focus is produced by SciDevNet and distributed in association with your local radio station.